welcome, Devil Sniper here, and today I'm bringing you episode number 23 of our career mode with West Ham United. The background has been slightly sped up because we're going to be doing three games in this episode, hence why it's a little bit longer than normal. We won't be doing three three games per episode any further down the line. We'll put we'll go back to the uh, to the two games per episode, and sometimes it might be one game per episode, depending on how biblical the game is. But uh, for this one, we're doing three games because I want to get a bit of a crack on with the season and start getting into the juicy games. So one thing I will say in my defence is if you're not feeling it, don't play it, and unfortunately I do, and uh, some of the games are very exciting, but the results don't go our way, but hopefully you'll still enjoy it. This is the league table as it stands currently, and I've got to say, that table does actually surprise me, especially seeing Arsenal in ninth, Everton in 10th, QPR up in 11th, that took me by surprise, I didn't expect to see him there, and of course, Stoke City still hanging on to 5th position, that is absolutely mental, they don't lose, they draw a lot of games, they just don't lose, I mean, 5 losses all season, is pretty impressive to be fair. After the result of the Arsenal game, which was absolutely sensational, we have games against Sunderland, of course we have Leicester, and then we have a big game against Stoke. We then see out the month with games against Manchester City and QPR. We move on into May, where we have Burnley, Aston Villa, Everton, and I believe the final game of May will be Newcastle. That's going to be one exciting month to say the least. Anyway, sit back and enjoy. So it's now time for the live part of the episode. Of course, Korea wearing the home kit, looking really, really cool. I love the home kit, I really do, but I do love that purple. It is beautiful. Looking pretty solid. Zerati has forced his way back into the team through training. The boy has done well, you know. I'm going to give him... An opportunity. Correa is keeping his position at the moment just a little bit ahead of Chavo. There is nothing like the atmosphere at the Bolan. I don't know if many of you many of you guys have actually been to the Bolan. I, I have on a few occasions. This season I haven't been as much as I like. I've been to one home game this season so far. Last season I went to three. The season before I went to five. It's difficult from where I live, but there is nothing like the atmosphere. When I was in my early 20s, I was fortunate enough to go week in, week out, which was beautiful, just because some of my family are, are lucky enough to have season tickets and, and they religiously go home. And a few of them actually do go to the away games as well. Not always, because you know it's like work and family, but my God, the atmosphere at the bowling on match day is just, it, it sends a, a tingle down your spine, an absolute tingle down your spine. That's the team we are running with. Obviously, the suspect has been changed up. Shalaba Javo, Berahino, who should be pushing for a first team position. Last day, of course, Kiate can't get aside because uh, Song is doing such a great job. And of course, our mercurial legend, our mercurial talisman, our mercurial copying genius is fit. It will be nice. And hopefully Zerati will score. That would be nice. We're going to go on attacking. And we're going to switch. No, we're not we're going to go attack. No, not ultra. Sugar. I want to go just on attacking. I wish you could set these before you actually start the game. Head to the box. Great head up, Noble. Get that. Oh, Winnie Reed. Oh, they've hit the post. Oh, my days. Down. Just get the ball up the line. But it's okay. We're doing a great def freaking defensive job. No, we're not. They're actually... They're pulling me everywhere. Oh, shit. They pulled me every which way but Tuesday. They pulled me every which bloody way. Oh, dear, oh, dear, oh, dear, oh, dear. It's all gravy. All gravy. As you know, we are going away to Leicester at the King Power Stadium on Saturday, the 30th of March. It's a three o'clock kickoff after the international break. Hopefully you will attend. We have actually got the free kick. Which I'm quite happy with. I didn't even realise the whistle had gone. But I, I, I will take that. Um, what am I going to do? I'm going to try and stick this in round about the pen spot. I'm not very good at these sort of free kicks. Don't really get too many of them. Pen spot area. Go for the header. No. Pen spot area. My ass. I overhit that quite a bit. Unlucky Songy boy. Unlucky. Songy doing a great job. Coming across. Blocks. With his arse, tries to back heel into Jenkinson, into Downing, I should say. But unfortunately, the referee does blow that half-time whistle. And it's 1-0 to Sunderland. Big second half here. Going to have to have a big second half. My days, at this moment in time, West Ham are looking second best. Sunderland are dominating possession, dominating the attacking area. And West Ham really don't have any answers at this moment in time, which is a bit concerning for the manager a lot. Downing's not looking impressed by being taken off. Not looking happy at all. Playing quite well, to be fair. Just... Not sharp enough, and that attacking third for me personally. 
as Sunderland launched an attack, but Jenkinson with the ball back inside. That's suicide by Carl Jenkinson. What was he thinking? Back healing the ball in the penalty box to Larson. Gifted him an opportunity and only for the acrobatics of Adrian with a world-class save has kept the scoreline at West Ham nil. Sunderland won and really at this moment in time, Sunderland looked favourites to go on to win the game. West Ham looked really out of sorts. Even though Sunderland in the last 20 minutes have looked out of sorts, West Ham have not looked at their best at this moment in time, especially after that error early from Mark Noble. Let's throw caution to the wind. Ball out attack. Come on, boys. Zerati misses the header into Valencia. Valencia looking to utilise his pace. Oh, he's broken past Wesley Brown. Valencia, get in there. Come on, boys. Back in this. We can still win this. We can still win this. Valencia with half a chance. Get in there. Oh, my days. Wesley Brown literally just launched into him and a great finish by Valencia. That's two and two at the moment. That's a flipping um, epic finish. I can't believe I bent that. Oh, one supporter in the background already got their hands up knowing they're going to score. Get in there. Come on, boys. Come on. Come on. No, no. Yellow card. Okay, I'll take that. Take that. I hope you're talking to him in Argentina so he can't understand you swearing, sir. Yeah, clearly didn't get the ball, unfortunately, but hey ho. Launch it, launch it, launch it, launch it, launch it, launch it, launch it. Oh, Valencia with the poor control. Yes, he's got the ball. No, what are you doing, blowing the wind? Seriously? There was no injury time. The corner was effectively injury time. I'll take the 1 1 draw. Really disappointed with the game. We didn't play well at all. We looked god awful. The man of the match for me. Probably has to be Creswell, the fullback. I think he's done extremely well. We are away at the King Power to Leicester City. Hopefully we can improve on the game against uh, Sunderland. We were god-awful. You know, we need to put the right the wrongs from that Sunderland game. It was an awful game. We didn't play well. We're still in ninth position, which is, you know, I'm happy with ninth position. Arsenal just moved above us. We're on 41 points. Bit of a gap between us and Everton. Obviously, Leicester are completely and utterly struggling. Strong side. Looks good to me. Looks competitive. Looks pacey. Looks solid. Come on, referee. Control this game. Seriously, could get out of hand. Leicester are just literally trying to main players. Again, diving in. Sacco with the cross. Into Enna Valencia. Nearly gets the header. Can he header it out? Onto the edge of the box. Into Chiarte. Chiarte with a shot. Great play, Tomkins. Getting in there. Ball into Jarvo, into Valencia. Can he keep hold of it? Oh, he cuts it side. Valencia. Oh, woo. why did he not finish that? Unfortunately, referees in the way of Tompkins. Well, our next game is at home on April the 11th, three o'clock kickoff against Stoke City. Should be an absolute cracker. Stoke still in the top five of the Premier League. A real firecracker game in prospect there. And it's going to see Stuart Downing coming on. Yes, Downing is coming on for Carl Jenkinson, who is hobbling off. Looks like it's an ankle injury. Could be quite serious. Not 100% sure on the severity of it at the moment. But Downing is going to be playing at left back. Cresswell is going to be moving across to right back. Hopefully that won't disorientate the players too much. And uh, Downing could do a good job at the right back position or the left back position. Great header in there. But Chambers just does enough to get the ball over. Great defensive header. Ball through, look at Jarvo. Jarvo's making a run, Jarvo's making a run, Jarvo's making a run. Oh, he couldn't get there. Shermichael came out and gathered the ball. And the halftime whistle does go. Halftime it is Leicester City nil, West Ham United nil. And it's all people of Mark Noble putting a very physical challenge in there on the Leicester midfielder. And again putting a very physical challenge in. Winning the ball, spraying it across to Jarvo. Jarvo in time. In space, surely this has to be the goal. Surely it has to be 1 0. He's missed the opportunity. How has Jarvo missed that? That's unfreaking believable. I can't believe. Oh, I don't believe that. Plays the ball into Valencia. It's taken out. Disgraceful challenge, but Valencia's keep going. Oh, he's beating one defender. Oh, he nearly beat the defender again. Unfortunately, he could cut back inside onto his stronger foot to get the shot away. But Ravel Morrison doing a great job there. Winning the ball into Noble. Noble spies the run of Valencia. Valencia with the cross shot. Oh, he's hit the post. 
Unbelievable play there from Enna Valencia. Getting a shot away from great pressure. Hits the post. West Ham are definitely upping the tempo, applying the pressure to Leicester City on uh, Ravel Morrison, knowing that he was going to get the pass away into Noble, but unfortunately the referee pulls the play back just in time as Chambers has the ball, plays it into Tompkins. Tompkins spreads the play out to the left-hand side to Downing, but the referee's blowing a full-time whistle. Not a great result for West Ham United in any way, shape or form. Really disappointing. I feel that the man of match has to be... Oh, this is tough. I would say Chambers or Downing. Downing came on, done such a great job at fullback after after Jenkinson went off. But Chambers done a great job as well. But I'm going to award it to Stuart Downing. I'm going to award it to Stuart Downing. I think he's done such a great job at fullback. So it's safe to say, so far, the results haven't been what we expect or what we would like to see from our beloved West Ham United. It has been a bit of a struggle. I really, really was playing pretty badly and we still have one game to go, which doesn't fill me full of joy. Hopefully it fills you full of joy to uh, perhaps watch me fail. That aside, we're going to do a squad report because it's at the end of the month, the start of a new month, start of a fresh month before we play Stoke City. So we're going to do the youths first. Have a look at our fantastic youth players that we have because they look pretty awesome, to be fair. They're all from Brazil. The first lad up looks pretty damn good. Our second lad, Emilio, I mean, 78 to 92. He looks like he's going to be right midfield, right wing, which I'm really, really happy with. Hopefully, he'll get a bit of pace on him and he'll be able to fly down that wing. But he does really impress me now. Martinho Consal really does confuse me. I feel that he's going to be like a CDM. The way they've got him positioned on the actual team sheet, he's going to be a CDM. If he is a CDM, he is going to be absolutely amazing. But he is 15. Hopefully, he'll grow in height. Hopefully, he'll change position. If he becomes a cam, I think we could be looking at the unofficial Filippo Bonner. Purty, I really do. The, 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 the actual potential of 85 to 91 is just sensational. It may take him a long while to get there, but who knows and who particularly cares because we're going to be doing this career mode all the way up to FIFA 16. As you can see, the squad report, Leo Chambers. Absolutely love Leo Chambers. I think he's going to be a revelation. As, I, as I've said before, he can actually play right back. So he might be able to do as a job as a right back. Save us some cash when we actually do get rid of DeMille because as much as I love DeMille and I really do love DeMille, I just don't think he's good enough to stay at the club, unfortunately. And that's a position we're going to have to change. And I really want to bring in Cole Jenkinson. Hopefully, he won't cost us too much. I mean, after having him on loan, I'd expect Arsenal to offload him on the cheap for us, which would be quite impressive. Um, but we'll have to wait and see. But the boys in the defence, I'm really, really chuffed with, especially Reese Burke. He's come in. He's done a, a pretty good job. You know, he's made a couple of sloppy errors. But he's young, and you have to have faith in the youth. At the end of the day, if they don't make these mistakes, they're never going to learn. They're never going to improve. So learning from his error, hopefully he will become a better centre-back. But only time will tell. He'll more likely go out on loan come the summer, to be fair. Zerati is actually growing, but one goal. One goal is just not good enough. I think he's had 19 games or 20 games without a goal, which is just absolutely un. Forgivable. As you can see, though, our boy Sacco wants, uh, uh, he's unhappy. He feels unpaid. So um, I'm going to do the only thing I possibly can. I'm going to throw money at him because we need to keep him. I love him on the right hand side. I'm not 100% sure if I love him up top, but I love him as a right midfielder, a right winger, as a ram. I think he's brilliant. I think in time, perhaps I will learn to love him as a striker. If he can get into that role, because we do have the big man AC. And I know there's been a few rumours saying that I might sell him in the summer, but I can put them to bed right now. AC is going nowhere. The big man is staying at West Ham. Now, let's get back to the live episode. Big game against Stoke at the Boland. Obviously, they're going to go in their away kit. We're going to play in our home kit. That's pretty much obvious. Hopefully, it's going to be nice weather, overcast. As you know, six minutes, world class setting. I'm happy with that team. Giving a, uh, a home game to uh, Reese Burke. But uh, Stoke just outside the top five. So they're sixth in the division. Win ninth. Win today could push us up. Especially if we score some goals above Sunderland. Who are minus four. We're minus one. Which is uh, disappointing. This is a massive, massive game. We need to get this right from the start. We need to really just go for it. And uh, the 4-4-2 is a formation that uh, uh, it's, it's good fun. And I, I do like it. But... At the same time, I think it's a little bit negative. I don't feel as fluent as I do with uh, my 4-3-3 because I feel the 4-3-3 gives me better attacking options when I'm playing well. Song's picking up that ball. Look to... Um, great pass inside. Valencia, no one's moved off. No, 
Oh, he's going to have to cut back onto his stronger foot. Can he get the shot away? No, I can't get the shot away. Oh, is that a free kick? Is that a free kick? Is that f That's got to be a free kick, surely. That is a free kick. Oh, okay. Oh, no. This is where Darren should be sticking this in the top corner. Oh, I've hit the wall. I've hit the wall. I hit the wall. Oh, my days. Big game coming up. Yes, we are going to the Etihad Stadium. 18th of April, 3 o'clock kickoff, Manchester City. Do be careful because there is roadworks currently on the M6. Jean, go on, hit him hard. Oh, he passed the ball, he must have heard me. Great play by O'Brien, but the ball hits fucking no ball and comes on. Ah, ah, no. Ooh. And that's half time. Holy shit, that first half went really quickly. And um, disappointingly, not enjoying this 4-4-2. I really, I, I, I'm just not getting on with formations at the moment. I really need to, we really need to somehow just up our game. I don't know where we're going wrong. And we just gifted them into space. Yep, we broke through. Moses is going to make it 1-0. Unbelievable. Absolutely unbelievable. Keep Noble on. I'm going to go a bit attacking. I'm going to bring on Ravel Morrison and sort of say, do you know what? We're 1-0 down. Stuff it. Let's go for it. End off. Let's go for it. This could be the moment that, you know, Zerati needs. This could be a double goal game. This could be a double goal game. I very much doubt it, but you never know. Get up. Get up. Come on, boys. Get into them. Fuck them up. Get into them. Can see the goal. Shit. Well, that's pretty much all she wrote. Poor defending. Really, really poor defending. That is a beautiful ball. Oh, he's cut inside. Come on, Zerati. Oh, Zerati. He will score. Come on, son. Come on, boys. Jesus Christ. Oh, Burke is just given. Oh, not 3 0. No way. 3 0. But just gift the ball away. I can't believe that. That's ridiculous. Should have stuck with a 4 3 3. Just gifted them a the third goal. Yep. Gifted them. Gifted them the third goal. Fuck off with your celebration. Fuck off. And we hit the post. You kidding me? You can see how frustrated. Really frustrated. Utterly abysmal. Utterly abysmal. I can't honestly... I'm absolutely speechless. I used to dream about cars and things and things About being a star and things and things I thought that I 